<laughs> what a performance. What a performance. Chelsea beat Wrexham 5-0. Outstanding performance from the boys. Outstanding. And what makes it even better is the fact that we didn't even play our best team. Nkunku didn't start. Neither did Mikhailo Mudrik. Neither did Noni Madweki. Neither did Reese James. Neither did Colwell, Thiago Silva, Enzo Fernandez. We didn't even have Moises Caicedo yet, but he didn't even played either. But the youngsters, they did their thing. They did their thing. And Pochettino let the youngsters express themselves. They took the game to Wrexham. Wrexham was on niche, was on niche. And I am so pleased with this performance. It's a great way to start the Pochettino era because that is the first game he ever managed as a Chelsea manager. And Poch Bull is here. Poch Bull is here. And I'm just going to start off going through the first half and that then the second half. But just how it goes is that in the first three minutes, we got our goal. Nicholas Jackson, who was for me the player of the first half, he linked up with Ian Matson, got his assist. But Ian Matson, Ian Matson put away in the third minute and got us off to a great start. Then in the, um, then he eventually scored a second goal in the in the first half. Good link up between Ian Matson and Carney Chakui Mako. It was a positive, positive goal and it was a great finish. Bottom corner in that. Psh, I mean, just went boom. Like, Abby wrote to you. That was a great finish. And for a guy who's a left back, He's playing left mid. He showed immense talent. And this is why he was so influential in helping Burnley get into the Premier League this season. Hopefully he can stay in the team and Pochettino can um, get the best out of him and help Matson rival Chilwell for the left back position because I personally wouldn't want Kukurela to play. But and with being Matson here, that might that could be the case. So hopefully he can continue his form. And we get to see him in a couple more games, but well played to Ian Matson. And we're still talk about the first half. Nicholas Jackson, he for me was the player of the first half. We have a guy who not only just have a guy like him, but we have a manager in Pochettino which will allow players to have the freedom of space. He can drift to the left, drift to the right, come deep, link up play. He can do all of that and he is allowed to. He is allowed to. And that is a great thing. Flexibility, which will add different dimensions to our game and make the opposition confused. Is he going to come from the left? Is he going to come from the right? What is he going to be on? They don't know. But we know that is the best thing. And the more we play this way under Pochettino and have his tactics, the high press energy, the interchanging in positions, we are going to be great this season, in my opinion. And we only have one game a week. Bear that in mind. Only one game a week. So much time on the training pitch for Pochettino to get his ideas over to the players. It's just about the players listening to Pochettino. But yeah, man, that was the first half. Ended 2-0. And then in the second half, we didn't start off that well. We changed formation. A couple of players came on. Co I mean, Choro came on. So did Gallagher. So did um, Nkunku as well. Um, the second half, it was it didn't start off as good as the first, but it ended as the way the first half, I mean the first half started on the goals. Cassidy, he was doing his thing. Second half, he showed a lot more. Got an assist for Nkunku, doing a couple of step overs, going past players, being threatening, getting into the box, not only being in our box, but getting into the other players' box as well. It's been a long time since we've had um a midfielder do all of this, whether he can defend as well as he can attack. It's been a while since we've had a player like that. And he reminds man of um, Ruben Loftus Cheek, the big physicality that he has to drive with the ball, to go past players, to do a skill, to help other players get into good positions. This is him. And if you saw the Under-20 World Cup, you would have seen that he is a, that his potential compared to the people around his age is very, very high. And with the right coaching and the right um, and with enough opportunities, he will be able to elevate and achieve his potential, which is very, very high. So good, good game from Casade, and also good game from Andre Santos. I felt like he played very well. Um, he was showing how he could um switch the ball 
and also drive of the ball. It's good because these guys, their first game is playing in the Chelsea shirt and it's the first of many. Santos, for me, has probably the most potential of all their under 19-year-olds, 19, 18-year-olds. He's been called up to Brazil national team. He's been influential. Um, and Vasco da Gama. And boy, hopefully he can stay here. He's recently, today, it was confirmed that he got on his work permit. So he will be in the Premier League squad. He does not need to go out on loan. He needs to stay here and potentially play a backup to Moise Caicedo if we get him. Because not only can he play as a cam, he can play as a DM, he can play anywhere in midfield. That's him. And he is just so cold. I can't wait to see him play in the Premier League. But good performance from you, Andre Santos. And obviously, another player we have to talk about, Christopher Nkunku. Man like Nkunku, it was so finally good to see you play. And you start your Chelsea career with a goal. Going in behind, Cassidy plays you through. And you just go casually pass around the keeper. And, not, and you're not going to be the guy that will just kick the ball and make it roll in. No, you're going to put power into that and make it high. So that even if a defender is there, you're going to make it as difficult for them to stop it as possible. Why? Because you want to score. How many times have we in the previous couple of seasons seen guys one-on-one -on -one in that? You don't have the conviction to put the ball in the back of the net. And Nkunku is here to instill, with not only just in himself, but in the team as well, to instill that killer instinct, that goal mentality. Because for so many years, we haven't had someone who, can, who we can rely upon to put the goals in the back of the net enough. That's why this season I'm expecting Nkunku to at least get 15 goals in all competitions. That is the minimum for me he needs to get because for me, he's going to be the spark. He's going to be the spark for this team and he will determine whether we have a good season or not because he's the leader in this attack. I know we have Sterling, I know we have other players, but Nkunku is the key for me. And as long as he fulfills his potential, Pochettino coached him the right way, we are going to be good for this season and top four will be ideal for us to get especially because we have one game a week. So for me, um, it was an outstanding performance. Still got to big up Angelo Gabriel for um for getting his um for getting an assist. Have to big him up for that. Not to mention you have to big up not to mention you have to big up um Moreo and who was I said Ian Matson, Malo Gusto as well. I have to big up these players. So for me, let's just um so for me, let's just hmm. so so for me, sorry about that, but yeah, for me, I just need the team to do what they're doing and obviously just continue to perform. Someone was calling my phone and Roman got me distracted, but yeah man, I can't cap. The game was outstanding. Pochettino, even what I said in my match preview, the players, the players, they can, they need to listen to Pochettino and the Pochettino needs to listen to the players and to an extent as well. It's a working environment. You guys will learn from each other, but Pochettino needs to instill the fire inside these players to know that when they come to Cobham, wherever they go over around the world, when they come to play, they are playing for him playing his system and to get the best out of them because Pep Guardiola, he is a great manager, best in the world. But and not not but but if and if he um doesn't have his full team, he has a B team, that B team will do just as good as the A team could. Why? Because they're gonna follow the philosophy and the tactics that the manager has set. And that's what we need to do. Pochettino has only been here for one game, been here for just over over a week. What? You know, for like three weeks they've been doing training for, and the first game, not even the first team, there was no bench, there was no bench all to start, no Reese James, no Levi Colwell, no Thiago Silva, no Enzo, no Modric, no Madweki, like none of these guys took part today. So this is excellent, man. This is excellent, and I just can't wait 
to see the team against Brighton on Sunday. On Sunday. But, yeah, man, that's going to be it for me regarding this match review. Very, very blessed. Very blessed game. So happy I stayed up for it. And you guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Who was your favorite player? Who was you impressed with the most? And also, is and also thank you to everyone who joined my watch along. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel and who has shown support, whether that's on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, or Facebook, or on YouTube, of course. Please do the same. Hit the notification bell. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video, comment, and follow me on all my other socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Facebook for more Chelsea content. I'm CFC with this blue, and I'm out. Peace. Come on.